Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian, and welcome back to the Beginning C Sharp with Unity Screencast series. In this episode, you'll be introduced to your first loop, the for loop. And combined with an array, you'll be taking your new C Sharp skills to the next level. Oftentimes in programming, you'll need to do repetitive tasks. Say for instance that you wanted to proclaim your love for pizza to the world. To do this, you might create 10 different debug.log statements saying, I love pizza. With copy-paste, this isn't a problem, but what if you wanted to write it 100 times? Then copy-pasting gets a little tedious. Even worse, what happens if you have a torrid love affair with ice cream and no longer love pizza? You'll have to change all your past statements. Thankfully, computers are excellent at repeating themselves. In fact, Anytime you are writing code and you find yourself repeating yourself, a warning sign should come up. Repeated code means you may have to change a program in lots of different places. Thus, you hear this a lot in development. D-R-Y. This just means don't repeat yourself. Let the computer do it for you. And one way you could do this is with loops. The for loop simply repeats any code as long as the loop is running. You define a for loop in three different parts, an initializer, a condition, and a iterator. Here's how it works. You write the keyword for followed by parentheses. First comes your initializer. This is just a variable, almost always an int, and typically named i. The i just means iterator. After your initializer, you put a semicolon and then the condition. This determines how long the loop will run. The condition will evaluate to true false. In this case, I want the loop to run 10 times so the i variable is less than 10. This is because it was initialized at zero. By running zero through nine times, we get 10 iterations. Finally, I provide the iterator. This code runs after each loop. In this case, I'm incrementing the iterator. And that's it. You've defined your for loop. It just needs code. To add code, you provide a pair of braces after the loop, and all your code goes in between those braces. As your code loops, you do have a few options to manage the loop from within it. The first is the break statement. This is an old goodie that was introduced with the switch statement. The break statement breaks the loop. The code flow will exit the loop once it encounters it. The other keyword is continue. Continue simply stops the current iteration and skips to the next one. For instance, if you are processing some records and the current record doesn't meet your criteria, the continue keyword will skip to the next record. Loops really show off their stuff when working with arrays. An array is just a series of values which the loop can iterate over. Every array has a length property. This lets you know how many elements it contains. Don't worry about properties. You'll be learning about them soon enough. By using the length property, you can effectively loop through each element in the array, making access a breeze. Let's see loops in action. To get started working with for loops, we're going to create a new script. So here in control flow, I'm gonna click the create button. I'm gonna choose C sharp script, and I'm gonna call this for loop. So down in update here, let's create a very simple for loop. And the way we do this is we type for, and then we define our initializer, which is an int i, and we set this to zero. And we're gonna say less than 10 for our condition, and then we'll increment that. Now, everything between these braces will be printed out 10 times. Now, what we should do is put this in on disable so we don't have this run every single time. And here, we'll just simply print out the message, Unity rocks. Here back in Unity, I'm gonna select my cube. I'm going to remove the enumeration script, and we're going to add for loop to the cube. Now let's run our game, and we will disable the cube, and you can see we print out Unity rocks 10 times. Let's do another loop. Again, we're gonna initialize it to zero. We're gonna set this less than 10 and we're gonna increment it like so. And 
Now what I'm going to do is every time I encounter an odd number, I'm going to skip that iteration of the loop. The way we do this is with an if statement. We do if modulus two doesn't equal zero. So if this isn't, if this isn't even, then what we'll do is continue the loop, meaning we'll jump to the next iteration. And here, we'll just print out the result. Before we do that, I'm just gonna silence this debug so that we, we won't have a cluttered console. Now we're gonna start. I'm going to disable the cube and you can see here we go i equals 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And you can see it doesn't run 10 because i only gets up to 9. Now, believe it or not, you can actually have loops within loops. I'm going to copy this. And instead of printing out this here, what I'll do is create another loop. And since we already have I declared within this scope, and the scope is declared right here, I'm gonna create another variable, and I'm just gonna call this J. And we'll have the same sort of logic. We'll only check to see if this is, we'll continue the loop if it's an odd number. And what we can do is just simply add I and J together. All this is doing is printing out i plus j equals, and then, and then we add these two together. Here we're going to run our game. We have our console open, and now we'll disable the cube. And you can see here, it prints out 6 plus 8 equals 14, and loops through all those numbers. When setting up loops, it's common to do something like this, but you don't necessarily have to increase this value here. You can also decrease it as well. So you can do something like this too. Now, if I ran this loop, what would happen is that this would decrease every single time the loop was encountered. And this loop is true so long as I is less than 10. But since I'm decrementing i, this loop would run on for infinity because I would never reach the condition in which it would end. So you have to be very careful about that. Now before I demonstrate arrays, take a look at this code. And when you look at it at a glance, you can see there's a lot of stuff going on in this. But if you've gone through this entire series, Hopefully that you'll be able to read this code and understand exactly what it's doing. Think back 13 episodes when you may have had no C-sharp experience whatsoever, and this would seem incredibly alien. But as you've learned and built on concept after concept, it's actually pretty clear with what we're doing. And you'll discover this is true with all code. The more you learn about code, the less mysterious it becomes, and then you realize that it's, this is just logic that we're working with. Okay, let's create an array. And we'll call this score. So here we have our score variable and we're just gonna set up five different scores. Now we wanna loop through those scores. Now, previous to loops, we would have to do something like this. And this doesn't really work at all, because if we add another score to the scores variable, or if we delete a score, we'll have to update this code as well. Thankfully, loops make this incredibly easy to do. Here we'll set an i variable. We're going to do i less than score. And then we will just access the length property like that. And then we'll increment. And now we can just simply print out the score. And 
and we'll clear our console. We're going to start Unity. And now I'm going to disable my cube. And here you can see it, this loops through each element of the array and prints it out to the console. That's it for this screencast, but as always, we like to leave off with a challenge. Your challenge is to create a leaderboard script that has two arrays. One contains a player name, the other contains their scores. In your leaderboard script, loop through both arrays, printing out the player name followed by the player's score. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. In your challenge, I asked you to create two arrays, one that contains names and another that contains high scores, and then I wanted you to iterate through them and print out the name of a person followed by their high score. Let's do that now. I'm gonna first select the cube and we'll get rid of this for loop script here. And here in control flow, we'll create our new script and we'll just call this one high scores. Here inside of Visual Studio, I'm going to create two arrays. Here we have a string array that contains the player's names, and now we have an int array that contains their scores. And now we're going to add the high scores to the cube. When I select this, the cube, you can see we have players and scores. So we'll set three players, and we'll have three scores. We're going to return back to high scores here, and now we're going to print out the result. What we'll do is loop through the players, and we use the length property to do that. And now what we can do is just print out the result. And here we have the console open, and now we'll select our cube and disable it. And you can see we print out the names followed by the score.